In today's video, I am going to talk about dependency injection in ASP.NET Core. By the end of this video, you will know the basics to take the most of dependency injection in ASP.NET Core. My name is Pat. If you are new here, consider subscribing because it motivates me to make more videos. Let's get into it. You are looking at a small application written with ASP.NET Core MVC. The main page displays the rate of a list of cryptocurrencies and a button to download this list. Let's take a look at the code. The main view is served by the controller name home. In this controller, I use a service name currency service to download the cryptocurrency rate from a remote API. The result is limited to 10 records for simplicity. Creating an instance of currency service with the keyword new in the controller makes the controller strongly coupled to the service. In a larger application, coupling like this can become a problem. If we want to test the controller, we will have to isolate it from the outside world. But with the code as it is, a call to the API will be made. Let's also imagine that we need another implementation for currency service. This could happen because we have found a better service, for example. Changing the implementation will result in the modification of our controller and any client code to the currency service. In a larger application, this will open doors for bugs. How can we make our code a little less couple? by following the dependency inversion principle. The principle states that high level module should not depend on low level module. Both should depend on abstractions. Abstractions should not depend on details. Details should depend on abstractions. This means that how a controller should no longer depend on a concrete class like currency service, but rather on an interface. And the service itself will implement that interface. Notice that we invert the arrow pointing to the currency service, thus dependency inversions. The first step to a loose couple code will be to create an interface for currency service. In the currency service class, Right-click on the class name, choose Extract an Interface. We will name the interface iCurrencyService. Click on OK to generate the interface. Once the interface is created, we go back to our controller. We replace currency service by iCurrencyService. We still have a problem with the creation of the instance. We have to find a way to receive an instance of iCurrency without creating it with the new keyword. This is where the dependency injection principle comes into play. Dependency injection is a technique in which an object can receive its dependency through an injector. The injector is also called dependency injection container or DI container in short. In ASP.NET Core, it is automatically provided with the package Microsoft.extensions.dependencyinjection. The most popular way to receive a dependency is to get it as an argument in the constructor. Let's change home constructor. We pass I currency service as an argument. We remove the new keyword and assign the argument to the currency service variable. This change means that a concrete implementation of iCurrencyService will be created by the DI container and passed as a constructor parameter. How does the DI container know which implementation to create for a given interface? We need to register the dependency with the DI container. In ASP.NET Core, the registration occurs in startup.cs file in the configure service method. The service object exposes different extension method for different scenarios. We select the add scope method. For this interface, iCurrency, we want this implementation, currency service. Scope 
means that the object will be disposed at the end of the request. You can manage the lifetime of a dependency with add singleton extension method if you want a shared instance for the whole app and add transient if you want a new instance each time the dependency is requested. We can highlight the three main roles for the DI container, registering dependencies, resolving dependencies when needed, and managing the lifetime of dependencies. Let's run the application to see if it's still working. As you can see, it works. Now let's take a look at this download button. When you click on it, the download method is called. It retrieves the list of cryptocurrencies. It passes the list to the export method of the CSV exporter object in order to export the list as a CSV file. The CSV exporter is a generic class that accepts a type and export data of the specified type to a CSV file. We also have a coupling problem here because we are creating an instance of the CSV exporter with the new keyword. As in the previous example, let's extract an interface from the CSV exporter class. We name it iCSV exporter. Let's register the dependency. In order to register a generic service, we are going to use the method add scoped and pass the type of interface as first argument and the type of the implementation as second argument. Let's go back to the controller to configure the injection. This dependency is only used in this method. Rather than injecting through the constructor, we will use method injection. In the download method, we use the from service method attribute and we pass the iCSV exporter interface as an argument. Let's test the changes in the hub. When I click on the download button, I receive my dependency as an argument in the download method. Let's continue. The CSV file is created. I can open it. That's how you register a generic service and now you inject a dependency in a method. In the following section, we will see how to inject a dependency in a view. Let's add an entry in the app settings.json. Let's call the key in beta mode. Let's give the value true. This parameter will help display a message telling that the application is in beta. Let's go to the layout view. We will inject an instance of the I configuration interface in order to read the app settings.json file. The injection is done with the inject directive. Then, next to the title of our application, we will add some code to check the value of the in beta mode parameter. If this parameter is true, we will display a label beta. Let's run the application. You can see that a label with beta is displayed. Let's change the value of the in beta mode parameter to false. You can see that the label does not appear anymore. This is how you can inject a service into a razor view. You may wonder why we didn't register I configuration in the startup.cs file. ASP.NET Core automatically registers some services called framework services. This is the case for I logger, I configuration, and etc. The services that we have to register ourselves are called application services. That's the one we register in the startup.cs file. The currency service uses the HTTP client class to query a remote API. For an efficient use of HTTP client, 
we must delegate its creation to the iHTTP client factory interface. Let's modify the constructor so that it gets the HTTP client instance by injection. Let's go to the startup.cs file. In the configure services method, we call the add HTTP client method on the service object. The first type argument is the I currency service interface, and the second is the currency service implementation. With this line of code, the interface I currency service will be resolved with currency service and currency service will receive an instance of HTTP client. So we can delete the previous registration of I currency service. Let's run the application to see if it's still working. The constructor of currency service receive an instance of HTTP client and our data is loaded correctly. The configure service method contains three lines of code to register dependencies. In a larger application, this method can quickly grow and become difficult to read and maintain. To avoid this, we can group the dependency registration in an extension method. Let's create a new class named app service registration. You can call it whatever you want. The class is static. Let's add a static method named add app services. By convention, the method extension always starts with add and then the name of the logical grouping. This method will be added to the I service collection interface. Let's copy the line contained in the configure services method into the new method. Let's go back to the configure service and replace the two existing line by the add app services method. Let's launch the app again. Everything works as before. For a given service, if there are many registrations, the last one will override the previous ones. To avoid this, we can register a service using the extension method that starts with try had. This way, a service will be registered only if it doesn't already exist. Let's run the app again to see if it works. It's still working. That's it for this tutorial. If you enjoy it, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support the channel, hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you soon.